Natalia Haynes here at the March 2011 Stingray Meet. I can't wait to see what stuff we have planned for us today. I'm Chris Abbott, student reporter here at the March 2011 Swim Meet. I can't wait to see what happens today. Welcome to our swim meet. I'm so excited. We have some very exciting activities uh, planned for you this afternoon. And uh, we have five things on the agenda. So we're going to go ahead and get it rolling. And Miss Orm's class, they're going to get started. Uh, they're going to kick off our swim meet today with a very special poem. Okay, we've been working on poetry in second grade. And this is the first poem that they have created. And we read the story, Al Moon by Jane Yolen and we took some of her descriptive language and her ideas and we wrote our own poem about going owling using her language. There's a long line that snuck up behind me. Here we go. Take it away, Miss McMillan. Well, my golden ticket winner did an awesome job on his spring riding. We've been riding, um, doing our four blocks and writing about how spring feels and smells and looks like. And he just shocked me with doing a beautiful piece. So my, my golden ticket winner is Darius Hobart. My golden ticket winner, I could describe this person in many words, a great leader, a great team player, and a great student, but I'll just use one. She's a role model, Annie Muhammad. Okay, I need to do Miss Gray's first. She was really proud of someone who has really progressed in reading this, thing, this term. Uh, that'd be Austin Humphrey. And my golden ticket goes to someone who has pretty much improved all year long, and I feel like he needs to be recognized to be Zeke Thompson. Okay, my golden ticket winner is somebody who put a lot of effort in the third quarter into improving his grades, Noah Shepard. My golden ticket winner is somebody who comes to school every day trying to do her very best. She always produces high quality work and she's a great helper. I know I can always count on Ella Buley. My golden ticket winner comes to school every day. Once again, quality work, we love it. Michaela, good all, come on down.
And my golden ticket winner has had great behavior, has had a real change in grades, and for the first time is making A-B honor roll, and it's Neil Dillinder. My golden ticket winner is an awesome rider. I was bragging to this child's mom and dad yesterday in conferences how wonderful he is with words, how much detail he adds, and he's always working on his stations and getting things done. Mr. Will Bewley. My golden ticket winner is someone who has shown lots of improvement, especially in reading. He's using great strategies, and that's Dakota Huff. My golden ticket winner is a gentleman that greets me with a smile every morning, often gets my chair, was distinguished in both his common assessment and on his NAP scores, Carson Eden. My golden ticket winner has gone in reading from reading 50 words a minute to reading over 80 words a minute this year. He's worked very hard, it's Hayden Dorner. And I also have Ms. Leigh Hughes, and she says this student gets up early three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, to come in and work with Ms. Liebert at 8.15 in the morning. He does his best and works extra hard before and after school, and that's Seth Saylor. Okay, I have Miss German's golden ticket winner, and I understand he is not here today, but she would like to recognize Adam Pedro, good worker, always stays on task, and sets a good example. And my golden ticket winner is a young lady who is so responsible, always, and she's doing a fantastic job on her personal narrative, and that is Miss Zoe Dunford. person that I picked for my class um, is the demonstration of what perseverance really means. This person never gives up and even when she gets kicked down she gets, she tries to pick back up and recover and she's had an amazing two weeks. This goes to Alexis Stacy. My golden ticket winner is a quiet leader who has really come a long ways on her riding and it's just a joy to be able to watch her blossom into such a great writer. My golden ticket winner is Ruth Greenwell. My golden ticket winner is somebody that um, he just shows a great sense of character about himself. He's well liked among all the classmates and he doesn't resort to ever being a bully or putting other people down to make himself feel better. He also gives 110%, produces quality work, and he's just an all around really great kid. Um, Jonathan Peck. My golden ticket winner is kind and helpful to others. She's always uh, completes her, her assignments and she's a good role model, Madison Pierce. My golden ticket winner is someone who always gives 110% and has come so far this year in reading. My golden ticket winner is Trista Abbott. And my golden ticket winner is someone that's an example in my classroom. He's a hard worker and he always has great behavior. That's Logan Merrifield. All right, let's hear it one more time for our golden ticket winners. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're getting a good shot of those. Uh, fifth grade, we're not ready for you yet, but those of you that are going to be performing, uh, be sitting on ready and rocking on go. We're going to have you coming down in just a moment. What a great looking bunch of stingrays, those golden ticket award winners. All right, guys, head on back to your seats. Great job. Congratulations to all of you. Absolutely wonderful. All right, boys and girls, earlier today, earlier today, you should have received a sticker 
to go on your shirt from the February common assessment if you scored proficient or distinguished. So if you have a sticker on your shirt where you scored proficient or distinguished on any area of the February common assessment, I need you to stand to your feet. Oh my goodness, look at all of these stingrays standing. All right, let's hear it for the proficient Proficient and Distinguished Stingrays. Excellent. Yeah, just look at yourself up there on the big screen. That is fantastic. All right, thank you boys and girls. If you'll please be seated. That is absolutely wonderful. Fifth grade performers that are gonna be, for, oh, there they are. Mr. Lumpkins, uh, the drink, one for the drinking gourd. This is them. All right, boys and girls, earlier this week, uh, I was in a fifth grade classroom doing uh, an observation with Miss Gray. And as part, as a regular part of her class, these students performed what you're about to see. And it was absolutely wonderful. And uh, she and I talked later uh, about them being able to perform uh, in here. And I think you are going to absolutely love this performance. And uh, this, uh, I was looking, Mr. Lumpkins, where did he go? Do you want to introduce what they're about to see, to introduce what the students are about to see, so they'll know what's going on here? For the past few days in fifth grade, we have been practicing and performing the early song that the slaves used to sing, Follow the Drinking Gourd, with Miss Gray in Reading and Language Arts. Follow the Drinking Gourd is a song that the slaves sang to help them escape the bondage of the South. Peg Lake Joe is created, is considered as a historical person, while the lyrics of the song are actually used as a, were used as a coded guide to help the escaping slaves along the uh, Underground Railroad. Enjoy. Now this next group that's coming, I know all of you uh, are in 
Miss Stoltz Music Class, and she has put together an African drumming circle for us. I got to see this in class the other day, too. I have had some wonderful observations the past several days, and uh, this fifth grade group, they're going to be performing an African drumming circle, so, and I'm going to turn this over to Miss Stoltz. Yeah, it always works out really well with the fifth grade curriculum that we um, are talking about the same things usually at the same time. So in my class, we've been studying West African music and we are about to go into how the music changed when West African people had to come to America as slaves, which they're already doing in their fifth grade class. So what you just heard, Follow the Drinking Gourd, was one of the songs that's an example of um, what the music was like when West African people came to America. Vocal, because they didn't get to bring all these cool instruments with them. Um, mostly, if they needed percussion, they would have to do a lot of footwork, hand clapping, that kind of thing. But they used mostly their voice when they were singing. What we're going to demonstrate now is what their music was like before they had to come to America in a West African village with the instruments like what they would have got, would have used in West Africa. So you can see three different sizes of drums. We call these the daddy drums, the mama drums, and the baby drums. They work together as a family and that way communicating, talking back and forth. We'll start with two drums having a conversation. We call that call and response. And then some other, another drum group will come in as well as some shakers and some bells, all percussion instruments that are going to be playing different rhythm patterns at the same time. And we call that polyrhythm, which is also um, common in West African music. Both of these characteristics carried into the music that the West Africans brought to America. Boys and girls, not only are we blessed to have a wonderful uh, arts and humanities program here, I was talking to Miss Stoltz the other day when uh, I had met with her and our son uh, doing her uh, follow up meeting on her lesson. And we were just talking about all of the instruments that we have at our school. We are truly blessed uh, to have the amount of instruments and all that you have an opportunity to experience. My understanding is that there is not another elementary school in our county that has the amount of instruments that we have and the, and the various instruments uh, that we have for you to experience here. So thank you, Ms. Stoltz, for being on top of our music program. And uh, you know, teachers and staff, when I send that little form out that says, what will make your job easier? Ms. Stoltz never has any problem finding something to put on the list. So uh, she can attest to the fact that it pays off sometimes, doesn't it, Ms. Stoltz, to put that on. So anyway, thank you, fifth graders, for a great job. Excellent job. Now. Before we dismiss uh, and end our swim meet for the day, I have some very exciting news. And you want to listen to this one because I'm just curious, not without saying anything, just simply by raising your hand, how many people love to win prizes? Oh, yeah. Hands down. So do I. Well, let me tell you, you have an opportunity to win some very cool prizes. And here's all you have to do. It's come to school. That's it. Come to school. Show up for school. Starting on Monday. Starting Monday. For each week that you have perfect attendance. And when I say perfect, I'm not talking about dragging in 10 minutes late after the bell rings. 
or checking out 15 Minutes Before School's out. I'm talking about being here from bell to bell from the time we start school in the morning to the time we end in the afternoon for each week, for each full week, your name will go into a drawing. On the last day of school, and you have to be present to win because you can have your name in all those times, but if you're not here on the last day of school and we draw your name, you don't win. On the last day of school, if you're here that day, your name's gonna go in again on the last day and we're gonna be drawing. We're gonna be giving away lots of cool things. We're gonna be giving away some bicycles. We're gonna, we're gonna be giving away some iPods. We're gonna be giving away lots and lots of cool stuff that you are gonna love over the summer. Now, Now, let me ask you one question. One question. In order to be eligible to win, what do you have to do? Come to school. That's it. You have to come to school. Now, what if you're here every day until the last day of school but decide not to come? If I draw your name on that last day, and you're not here, you don't get the prize. Because here's what the plan is right now. The plan is to give away two boys and two girls bicycles. We're gonna give away one for K through two to a boy, one K through two to a girl, and then third through fifth grade, we're gonna give a boy's bicycle, and third through fifth grade, a girl's bicycle, and then numerous other prizes, too numerous to even mention right now. But as time gets closer, and we'll be telling you more and more about it, but I'm telling you, we are gonna be giving lots of stuff away, but in order for you to be eligible, you have to be here. So make sure, starting on Monday, you don't miss another day of school until we're out for summer. Teachers, thank you so much for getting your students down. We have one more thing before we go. Uh, if you remember, there was a challenge, and I would tell, and let me just go ahead and tell you, I have no earthly idea what the outcome was, but how many of you remember a challenge that was issued the other morning? That's something else I'd like to say. Um, our word study kids in the fifth grade, each week have been getting better and better and better, and I keep walking down that third grade hallway, and I keep seeing this word wizard thing. And I got to thinking, and I haven't even talked to my kids yet, but I, I'm pretty sure they're going to they're gonna be all right with it. Um, we're going to issue a challenge to the third grade group. We think, we actually think, that we will score more A's on Friday on our word study than you guys can put word wizards in the hall. Now that's the challenge. Here, here's the thing. Now I'm, I'm known for putting my money where my mouth is, okay? So here's the deal. If my fifth grade group tops your word wizards, okay, I'm going to give you something that you're probably never going to expect me to give you. I'm going to get right up here on this stage, and I'm going to give you at least one push-up for every one you score on an A, and I'm going to stand on my head for the count of one minute, or until I pass out with your one comes first, okay? Now that's the challenge. And I think this challenge is even better. If we win, we like to eat. So you're going to give us a cupcake party. So there, there's the challenge. We'll see what happens, OK? You've got four days. My guys already have their word study in their laps, OK? Going. So they're already working. So that's the challenge. What do you think? Are y'all going to take it? Okay. Well, I don't know what the outcome is, but I've got a feeling we're all about to find out. So who wants to make the announcement? Yeah, as we get a close-up of this here, come on. Word wizard, word wizard on the wall. Who will have the most word wizards of them all? Will it be the fifth grade, us baking bread? Or will it be the third grade, Mr. Lumpkins on his head? Let's see. Come on in here, camera crew. Here we go. 
How was your turnout, Mr. Lumpkins? I had 41 A's. 41 A's. Good job, fifth grade. Third graders, a great effort. 33. What's the, what's the catch? Is there a catch? 33. 33. So. <laughs> 74 total A's on word study. That, that's, that's pretty good. I had 25 out of 26 in one class. So I'm just going to tell you that was, that was something. So, but here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, when you've got that many A's, nobody loses. So third and fifth grade, both will get the cupcakes. And, and I'm gonna go out on a limb here, since somebody needs to see somebody stand on their head, then I guess I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. So everybody wins. Let's see how this works. Now, Mr. Lumpkins, they've been worried all week in the third grade. What's he going to do with his glasses up there? So you did take them off. Okay, they're gone. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Well, I will tell you, Mr. Lumpkins, I'm glad that was you because you would probably be calling 911 had it I tried to stand on my head. I'd probably be passed out right now. If I didn't pass out, I'd probably make a dent in the floor when I fell either way. But anyway, thank you. What great fun. Great job, third grade and fifth grade. That's lots of A's. And boys and girls, that was the whole purpose, was to see. Now, I'm just curious, third and fifth graders, Third and fifth graders, simply raise your hand if that's your first A on Word Wizard for the year. A word study. Yeah, word study. Fifth, fifth and third graders, if that's your first. Stand up if that was your first A for the year on word study. Give them a big hand, guys. Wonderful. What a great motivator, and that was the whole purpose, was to motivate some students to do something maybe they had not done earlier in the year. Now, boys and girls, we're about to dismiss. I'm here with Zeke Thompson for fifth grade. Mr. Lumpkins, Golden Ticket winner, what'd you do to win the Golden Ticket? I behaved and uh, got straightened out with my, um, choosing my friends and uh, do, do my work better. Did you think you were going to win? No, not really. How'd you like Mr. Lumpkins standing on his head? That was pretty funny. Are you glad that all the fifth graders won and the word was their thing? Yeah. Thank you. Back to you. Hi, I'm here with Madison from the third grade who was in Miss Cap's class. What did it take to win a golden ticket? Um, be a hard worker, a role model, and help others. Did you do all of those? Yes, I did. When they heard your name called for golden ticket, what were you thinking? Well, I'm so surprised. <laughs> Thanks, back to you. Hi, Chris Abbott here with my little sis, a golden ticket winner, Chris Abbott. What's it take to um, win a golden ticket, sis? Hard work and... Why do you think you won? Because I worked hard. You, did you think you were going to win before you won it? Yes. Why'd you think that? I don't know. You just kind of like... Thought you were gonna win it. Thanks, back to you. From third grade, the golden ticket winner. What'd you do to win the golden ticket? I was just being good. Did you think you were gonna win? Miss Kish just told me. Well, did you like Mr. Lumpkin's stained on head? 
said it's cubish. I said, did you like Mr. Lumpkin standing on his head? <laughs> it's really funny. Did you get an A on your word wizard? I don't know. Thank you, back to you. Hi, I'm here with Michaela Goodall, from a third grader in Miss Hutchinson class. What does it take to win a golden ticket? Mm, hard work. Did you do hard work? Kind of. When, they, when you heard your name being called for a golden ticket, what were you thinking? Were you, did you, did you think it was funny when Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head? Yes. Thanks, back to you. I'm here with Noah Shepard, a golden ticket winner. What do, what's it take to win a golden ticket? A lot of hard work and a lot of effort. What'd you do to win the golden ticket? I worked harder than I did in all the other periods, second and first. Did you think you were gonna win before you got it? Yes. Are you excited when fifth grade won the competition against third grade? Yes. Did you get an A? What? One more step. Yes, I get 100. Thanks, back to you. Hi, I'm here with Ella, a first grade winner. What'd you do to win the golden ticket? Uh, I just, uh, I was like reading really good. How do you like Mr. Lumpkin standing on his head? Uh, it was really good. Well, when you got called down to win the golden ticket, what was your reaction? Um, I just really, really excited. Did you think you were going to win it? Uh, no. Thank you. Back to you. Hi, I'm here with Willa, first grader from Miss Brown's class. What did it take to win a golden ticket? Well, be good and get your education right. What did you do to win a golden ticket? Well, read and get my words right. When the, you heard your name being called for a golden ticket, what were you thinking? I was thinking it, it would be someone else. Um, did, did you think it was funny when Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head? Thanks, back. I'm here with Cody Hub in first grade, a golden ticket winner. What'd you do to win the golden ticket? I write really good. And I write really good and stuff. Like all that. Did you think you were going to win a golden ticket? Yeah. Why was that? Because I was late learning. I learned really good. Was it funny when the sun stood on his head? Yeah. What do you think when you got called for the golden ticket? Cool. It's fun. That was cool? Thanks. Back to you. I'm here with Annie, a third grade winner from Miss Mahoney's class. What did you do to win the golden ticket? Um, all I did is work hard, list, follow directions. Did you think you were going to win? What was your reaction when your name was called? Uh, excited. How'd you like Mr. Lumpkin standing on his head? Funny. Did you think that the third graders or the fifth graders were going to win? Third. Well, thank you. Back Hi, to you. I'm here with Seth, the second grader from Miss Leahy's class. What, did, what was your reaction when you won your, the golden ticket? Super sick. What does it take to win a golden ticket? Be nice to all the people in the classroom. What did you think of Mr. Lumpkin standing on his head? When Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head, did you think it was funny? Yes, sir. I thought, I thought he was going to pass out. Thanks, back to Alexis, you. Alexis, a fourth grader in Miss Viley's class. What was going on in your head when you got called down for the golden ticket? Um, I'm very excited when she called my name. What do you think the expectations are for your teacher to get a golden ticket? Um, work hard, good grades, perfect attendance. How do you think you won? Because I worked very hard. Was it funny when Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. Thanks, Beck. Hi, I'm here with Ruth from fourth grade. What did you take? What does it take to win a golden ticket? Um, work cooperatively and act responsibly. Did you think you were going to win? No, until she said my name. What was going through your head when she called you down there? Um, that I was glad to win. Did you think it was funny when Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head? Yes. Thank you, back to you. Hayden, the second grader from Miss Anna's class. What did it take to win a golden ticket? Um, reading extinguished. I've been reading for about two years and done my homework for 20 minutes. And I work so hard. My teacher um, tells me that I do a great job each day, and I'm very good at reading. What went on with, in your mind when you won that golden ticket? Um, that I 
feel like I'm like so happy that I got my first golden ticket. Thanks, awesome. back in fifth grade in Miss Gray's class. What was your expectations for a golden ticket winner? I do I do my homework and my work study, and I done really good. Go. Why do you think Miss Gray chose you to win the golden ticket? Uh, cause I've been working very hard and during class and reading class and some studies. Planning was the one stood on his head. Yes, it was. Thanks, Becky. I'm here with Jonathan, a fourth grade winner from Miss Hobbs' class. What does it take to win a golden ticket for your teacher? Being good and getting good grades. Did you do that? What What was your reaction when you walked? When your name was called, surprised. I didn't think it was me. Are you glad that you won it? How'd you like Mr. Lumpkin standing on his head? That was funny. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Carson, a second grader from Miss Reeves' class. What did it take to win a golden ticket? Um, bring in your homework and be good and do your work. Finish your work. Did you do that? Yes. What was your reaction going on when you won that golden ticket? Happy. Did you think it was funny when Mr. Lumpkin stood on his head? Yes.